Good morning, my name is Jason Coyle, Operations Section Chief for Southwest Area Team 1. Today is June 19th, and this is your operational update, update for the north zone of the Calf Canyon Hermit's Peak Fire. Before I get started, I'd like to wish everyone happy June, Juneteenth and happy Father's Day. So uh, last night on the fire, uh, we did have some small acreage growth, um, primarily on the southern end. Well, it was all in the southern end, actually. But the current acreage is 341,424 acres, 72% contained, 2,409 personnel assigned to the incident. We did have two initial attacks yesterday, so two new fires that started within the area that we're responsible for responding to. And the, the, those fires were named the Picarese, because uh, it was on the side of Picarese Peak, and the Hondo Fire. And both of those fires, I'm pleased to report, are contained. All right, so before I, um, I would say before I get to the map, but I don't, I'll just, let's just start this a different way today. So there's some things that, um, that I just wanted to talk about for a minute that, that I think are relevant to, to what's going on in the future, make you guys aware of what our operational plans are for the day and for the coming days, and then talk about some way that some things that we apply that may be useful to you all as, as you plan for the, the rain events that are, that are certainly on the horizon and may happen as early as today. So we did get significant rain yesterday in Penasco and along the southern and the northern containment lines. Those, those, those contingency lines. That limited the ability for us to continue to work on those lines past a certain point, because it was three quarters of an inch plus, and, and frankly, it was just too muddy. Um, you know, the wind is that there's rain in those watersheds, and that prevents us from having to use those contingency lines. The, the challenge for us is that it also it makes it where the work that's part done can't be completed and can't be turned back over in a way that makes it useful for the future. So we are gonna continue that work. Um, but we're in the process of scaling down the number of resources that are committed to each one of those efforts. We now know that we have the, the we have some more time available to us to be able to complete that work, especially on the northern line. And we know that there's going to be a number of days where we're delayed in being able to do work because of precipitation the next week. So what makes the most sense is that we scale down those operations. So on those days that we, we can't get work done, then we... Um, you know, we're not having as many resources sitting idle. So that, that planning and that adjustment is taking place today. So that was on the west side of the fire. On the east side of the fire, there's actually an area where we had a, a reburn in the needle cast. So I talked to you all before about how we had some reburn before where the duff layer dried out and it was backing down the hill. And in this instance, what had happened is, it, is the fire had underburned the, the canopy so the, it didn't burn all the needles off of the pine trees but it's common for it to scorch the bottom needles when that happens. And then as those needles, they fall down to the ground, if they find some piece of heat, then they can burn through them. It's a way of fire to get across our lines. And the reason I wanted to kind of compare those, you know, the Penasco, the, what happened in Penasco, excuse me, and the contingency line, and what happened over there is on the east side, it, is that you, you should be um, skeptical of any aggregate assessments of what's going on in the fire. So if, if I sat there and told you, we got rain across the fire, this fire's too big for me to know that you got rain across the fire. And it's probably not gonna happen, maybe it will, that we get rain across the entire fire area. But when a fire's this big, it is, it is less likely than not that you would get fire across, the, or get rain across the whole fire area. So that's also a reminder for us, because you know, we, if we're sitting here in Taos at the incident command post or Panasco at one of the base camps or in Mora or up at Eagle Nest, and we get a bunch of rain there, it's easy first thing, oh, well, the fire probably got a bunch of rain last night. So every day we're going out and we're evaluating that. What that also means is that if I say, hey, we may not be able to get work done on this line today, or it looks like we're going to have to, um, you know, that we're going to be going in here and doing all this work on this other line today, crews could get out there and find a, a totally different situation than what we thought. Part of the challenges there is there's, there's not a bunch of rain gauges in this area. They're working to put more of them up, and there will be more of them up over time. And the, um, the radar depiction of the, of the precipitation with the big mountain range is, is, is not as good as it is in other parts of the, of the country. So 
a couple reasons why you should be a little bit skeptical of that. And then, um, let's see. I think that's that was it for what's going on in the fire. We still have our rapid response task force place to assist with any flooding or debris, debris removal. We will continue to work on our suppression repair as able, the same way from north to south and south to north along the, the 121 and the 434 corridors. Um, we're going to be move, we're going to be adjusting those efforts some to account for the, the the high precipitation potential over the next three or four days. But but the work will be ongoing, albeit at a limited rate. So the 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 item that I wanted to share with you all today is something that that we do frequently, and it's called a pace plan. So we we look at a fire, like we'll go to the map to talk about this. So because we really have a pace plan. So when the um, when this piece of fire was active, what used to be Division Mike, so the, the area just, just south of Tres Ritos and west of Angostura, that we wanted to try to keep the fire as in here as close to its current perimeter as we could. So our primary plan was to hold the fire here. Our alternate plan was to try to use the road or maybe try to use the, there's a, a bunch of aspens across here try to tie it into these aspen fields. And so an alternate plan is, in, the, in our vernacular, is, just an, is, is an alteration of that primary plan. Like you may do most of the primary plan and then you do a little bit of the alternate. The contingency plans, is why, and why we call these contingency lines, is in the event that we're unsuccessful at holding the fire here, then we already are working on the next plan deep. And then the emergent plan for us would be point protection. So it would be going right in people's backyards um, and trying to protect the fire from, from, uh, from impacting them. So that, that isn't our idea though. We, we didn't come up with that on our own, we stole it. Um, we stole it from the US Army Special Forces and that's, how they, that's the plan that they use for their, rate, for their communications. And so every time they go out on a mission, you, you know, they have their pace plan. And the question that's asked is what's your pace? Just like that. So the pace is, the, their primary use is satellite radio. Their alternate is a high frequency radio. Their contingent is a satellite phone, and their emergent is a survival radio on a guard channel that talks just up to any aircraft that are above them. And so what it allows for is what they call graceful degradation. Once the first plan fails, you're not like, oh no, everything's ruined, my plan failed. You're like, all right, we're gonna go down to the second plan, we're gonna go on the third plan. The, the reason I wanted to share that with you today is that there's communications limitations in the areas um, from more and north that are going to be affected by this fire. And so with those limitations, I would be thinking about, if I were in that situation, I would be thinking about what, um, what's my pace plan for my family. And the way I would be looking at that is like, hey, if mom and dad are at work and the kids are home alone, what's our pace plan? What's our primary? What's our alternate? What's our contingent? What's our emergent? If everybody's at home and it's at nighttime, what's our place pace plan? If debris crosses the road below us, if you know, we, we've been warned that there's flooding is imminent, whatever it is, and just game that stuff out and, and do that ahead of time and do it where you don't just have one plan. Do it where you have, hey, this is the thing we normally do. If we can't get a hold of each other, this is going to be our rally point in town. Or if you're outside of the, the Mora Valley area and there's a flash flood warning, then what I want you to do is go to, you know, go to Applebee's in the parking lot there, and we'll all rally there, whatever. It, 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 doesn't it doesn't matter so much what your plan is, because plans change, but that you come up with a plan ahead of time, and that you all agree with that, and you all communicate on that. So whenever it comes time to execute, you're not trying to think, well, you know, I bet they probably would go down to the corner market and wait for us if they can't get home. And so you go down to the corner market, or you think that, you know, I bet they're going to try to get through that debris flow, even though we talked about how dangerous it is, it is. So I better try to get through the debris flow from my side so I can get there and make sure that they don't try to do it. You know, it just, it creates situations that put people in harm's way. And, and unfortunately, uh, in Sedona, where I work, there's been a lot of flooding that's occurred and there's been loss of life that has occurred. And, and um, it hasn't always been because of the first initial bad decision is because of people trying to get in there and, and mitigate a problem and, and do it in a way that um, 
that just wasn't wise. So that's it for today. I wanted to share that pace plan modeling with you. Um, we anticipate to keep getting rain over the fire over the next several days. Uh, we don't anticipate the fire to grow very much at all, but I don't think it's going to put it out, um, not, not unless this keeps up for some time. Uh, that's just primarily because in that Pecos drainage, there's so much, so many dead trees. It looks like a, a, a like a, a ring on your bathtub if you look from Grass Mountain up to the north, up a, along the bottom of those big ridges. So all that dead wood is dry enough, and it's all connected together enough, and it has a it has an underside that doesn't get wet. So it's going to continue to burn through there, and not not quickly. It's not going to threaten any of our lines, you know, at least through this next week. But um, it'll, the, what time will tell is if, as it dries out, if by the time it dries out, if it's out or not. And we won't know that for, for several weeks. So with that, end of today's operational report. Thank you.